Okay, now with my unicorn illustration, I'm gonna show you how to set up for color once more. I've opened up a Photoshop file. It is 12 inches by 16 inches by 350. It can be any size you want as long as it's large enough for what you wanna do with it. And what we wanna do with these spot illustrations eventually is, is probably put them on a poster, right? So we want them pretty big. So that's why I'm going larger than eight by 10. I drag and drop the EPS on. I can make it look a little bit bigger. Hit return. It is a smart layer. And I do not want to rasterize it. So I'm going to lock it. So I don't accidentally do anything to it. Then I'm going to build a new layer in between the blank white background and the gray line work. Actually, before I lock it, I usually mark it as gray as well. And then I'm going to add a new layer that I call local flat color. Flat color is just all filled in with one even tone, but local means it's the color it actually is. So the local color of corn is yellow, right? And the local color of the corn husk is green. Whereas with my bull, I had to kind of pick my local colors, my local flat colors, and I'm still experimenting with them. For this, they're, they're kind of iconic. So how do I fill in the, the green husk? Well, the first thing I can try is I click on my vector smart object layer and I use the magic wand with contiguous turned on and the tolerance at this at the default 32 and I click within the shape and because it's a contained shape there's no openings it selected only the empty space within that husk then I can move to the local flat color layer and pick a color I want to use for it and there's lots of ways to choose colors I tend to start with only web colors kind of chunks it up for me And then you just use the paint bucket and drop it in. You could also say edit fill with foreground color. Okay. And then before I'm done with it, I can modify it if I want. I can go to hue saturation under adjustments. And I can say, okay, I like it, but it may be a little bit more yellow, maybe a little bit brighter. A little bit more saturated. Maybe like that. Because you'll find it's actually hard to choose colors on a computer screen. Colors are always relative to what's next to it. So I've started. Now what about the yellow? I go back to my vector and I click within it and then I can hold down shift and get the top and bottom. It took three different clicks to select all of that, right? Then I go to my local flat color, I find a color, on kind of a golden yellow, let's try this, drop it in. So let's darken that up a little bit. Go to image adjustment, hue saturation. Darken it, but make it more saturated. Maybe make it a little bit more golden yellow. Okay. So now I've got those two flat colors. Now this is a little bit of a husk back here, which is like going behind. And I want that to be a darker green. So what's interesting is I can select it because it's contained, move to my local flat color layer, and I can hold down option if I'm on the paint bucket tool and that will produce the uh, eyedropper. And I can select that green, but then just go to adjustments. No, I can't do adjustments. What can I do? I can click on it and I can just do a darker version of that green by sliding it down and then fill that. So that's our first kind of shadow color, right? But it's filling up its own space. Now for the mask, maybe like a bright blue. These are just flats. 
So they don't need to stay this way. This just gives me a way to select color for the different attributes. So if I do web colors, maybe something, uh, maybe purple, purplish blue to counter the yellow. But I have to first select it, and then go to local flat color, and then paint it in. And then uh, the arms, maybe I want those to be yellow as well. Maybe I want them to be the same yellow so I can use the eyedropper and steal that yellow. Then use the magic wand. This arm looks pretty contained. It is. Then use the paint bucket. Drop it in. This arm is not so contained. At least doesn't look to be. So if I click there, unfortunately, it selects all the outside as well. So if I paint that in, this is what happens. So what do I do? The easiest thing, honestly, is just to use your lasso tool. Just like you would color in Illustrator, it's like a piece of stained glass behind it. You make a shape. But then if you want it really clean and tight, like all of my other ones, where the, the black line word is cut out from it, then I can go to my vector and I can hold down the, or use the magic wand and hold down option while I deselect the black from it. So now it's just the shape inside that arm. And then what do I do? On the local flat color layer, same thing, drop it in. And then I'm just going to keep this illustration really simple. So the same color I used for the mask, I'll use for the legs, They're like superhero tights. And so I'm just going to use that eyedropper, select the mask color, use the magic wand, select these contained open shapes, hold down shift so I can do both of them, move to local flat color, paint them in, done. Now, you're not done with flat color until everything is flat, right? So if I want the eyes to stay white, I actually need to paint them in white. So let me select those. And I think I might as well select these as well. It's a little open spot, so it looks like it's a satin band or a reflective band. And then I can select the defaults and put white to the foreground and then just drop them in for local flat color. And now you see that they're white, right? Same thing for the speech bubble. I'm going to make uh, three copies of the background, so two additional copies. I'm going to make the first one black, fill with black, just like we did for our logo. The next one, I'm going to fill with gray, middle gray. This helps me see how it will work on a t-shirt, right? So you see how the white now shows up. But I need the white behind the speech bubble too, but that's easily done. I'm going to hold down shift and get all of these self-contained shapes within the letters, right? Then I'm going to go to local flat color and I'm going to paint in the white, just solid white. Now, do I need some sort of offset so it shows up? What do you guys think? Might be nice to have an offset. So this is my trick. Go to your vector, click on the magic wand, select everything on the outside of it, right? Add any undercuts, like where that arm is. The problem is it's cutting within this arm, so I'm going to use my magic wand and I'm going to delete the inside of this arm from the selection. So it actually doesn't matter. Okay, and then I'm going to add in, holding down shift with the lasso, that part of the arm. And then I'm going to use the magic wand, and I'm going to subtract all the black. So now, oh, you can't really see it very well. There you can see it. Now I have basically a whole uh, background stencil, right? 
of my spot illustration. And so on a new layer, I'm going to fill that. Well, first I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to say select inverse. And now I'm going to fill that with white. This is like a base primer layer. The colors go on top of that. The black goes on top of that. What that allows me to do is now I have that base primer layer I can add an offset to as a layer style, like a stroke. And you see how it, how it works. Easy. Okay. Let's save that. And we want to save it as Carl, assignment seven, spot illustration, unicorn. There's a PSD to the desktop. Now, both of these, they're just flat color so far. This one isn't finished. This one is pretty much finished with just its flat base color. So what we're going to do next is learn how to add tones to it, shadows. And for that, you have a handout within our Canvas course. So if we log in, this is a handout you guys can uh, start looking at before next class to get ideas about how you want to color. And I'll have time today to make sure you all have good line work, right? So if I go to digital art, and then I go to the assignment sheets, this is assignment seven, but underneath assignment sheets, you'll see links. And the, here we have some helpful handouts now from now on. So there's that vector logo and illustrator tips handout that was part of a slideshow that we used for our logo. We have a handout for standard mat and paper sizes, which is helpful for printing. But now we start getting into to coloring and painting, right? So if you download these, you probably should just go ahead and download them instead of previewing them. There we go. You'll see some of the steps we go through, right? So once we have vector line art, then we want flat local color. Once we have flat local color, we can start adding lighting and tones and texture. And this is the other one. Digital coloring happens behind an outline. Digital painting doesn't use an outline. So these will be helpful in thinking about how to approach your coloring. 